Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm truly humbled and honored with this privilege to be here for the OP Gupta Sahib oration. Um, respected chairpersons, everyone in the audience, I'm going to speak for the next 20, 25 minutes on understanding and addressing global disparities amongst type 1 diabetes. I start with a warm tribute to Dr. O.P. Gupta, sir, the diabetes guru of India, as we just heard. We are because you were. All our teachers, many whom I have not met, but because they paved the way, today we are here and we can actually learn, grow, and express ourselves. So a very, very warm tribute to Dr. O.P. Gupta. I cannot start my talk without a gratitude to Dr. Bhante Sabu. Not because he gave me this talk, but because he is the change driver for the cause which I'm speaking today. For type one care in India, there were many people working in pockets across the country. Dr. Bansi was working in Ahmedabad, I was working in Aurangabad, people were working across the country. But this one person single-handedly, probably this is one aspect people know less about him, but he single-handedly drove everyone, pushed everyone, brought everyone together. He brought his pad to India. He brought sweet registry to India. He pushed everyone to work in the space, took everyone along. And this is one of his photographs he, where he traveled all the way to Aurangabad. And these are all the children of Uran, the children living with type 1 diabetes in Marathwada, where we gathered in a stadium. And he was there to encourage them. I'm going to start with what I have to say, and I think there should be a disclaimer like we have in movies. It's quite shocking. It could hurt. It could give you sleepless nights if you are so inclined. What is disparity? By definition, disparity is a marked difference in the level of treatment, especially that is seen as unfair. I think I would take one second to think about this sentence, about if it is seen as unfair. Sometimes disparity exists, but we think, we don't think. We don't really think. And then when we think, we think somebody who is, say, for example, illiterate deserves what he gets, or is poor deserves what he gets, or belongs to a certain ethnicity or race deserves what they get. So disparity will only matter if we think it is unfair. But I am talking beyond disparity. Disparity is only about things being not there. But as people in this fraternity, today is an inclusive society. Today is a time where we all live in an inclusive world. Today is a time where we accept LGBTQ, where AA+, et cetera, et cetera. And we do. We accept all kinds of body shapes and sizes. We are thinking beyond just lack of disparity. We are talking about equality. And where equality is when everyone is getting a pair of shoes. But diversity is when everyone is getting a different pair of shoes. I'm sure all of us would not like to be wearing the same. And I, you know I'm talking about shoes, but I'm talking about everything in life, whether it be food, shelter, clothing, healthcare, education, my own rights, my thoughts, my religion, everything. Equity is when everyone is getting a shoe that fits. So getting a shoe that doesn't fit and claiming that I've given it to you is not going to make a difference. And acceptance, and we understand that you are wearing a different shoe, I am wearing a different shoe. And belonging is when you can wear whatever you want without being judged. And this is not shoes we are talking about. This is everything in life. We are evolving from the stage of lack of disparity to a place where ultimately we are equal, diverse. We have equity, acceptance, and belonging in our workplace as well as our healthcare <laughs> delivery. We speak, do we practice? This is a board at the entrance where my patients keep their shoes. This is whoever has been to my clinic has seen is ki jute chaple aap bhale pehne rakhe par jaat paat unch neech chhua chhut ling bhed jaisi mansikta hai aap yahi utar de aaiye aapka swagat hai so unless we practice what we say 
it doesn't translate into taking away the disparity. So let's now understand and address these disparities that occur in T1D lives across the globe in India. Problems and solutions are remain similar across the continents, be it Africa, be it Latin America, be it Asia, Southeast Asia, it's gonna be very similar except with some cultural variations. Now these problems, I am all the data that I'm gonna give you is from the type one diabetes index, T1D index website. And whatever solutions I hope, a little ray of hope that I'm gonna try to show, although I'm gonna share what we thought we could do in Udan, which means a small village area in the remotest and the most backward part of Maharashtra, Maharashtra that's Maratwada. But I know that work is being done in every corner of the country and the world. So it's not specific to us, it's just a thought. And as I said, content could be disturbing and this is the globe. 8.7 million people living with type 1 diabetes across the world, 3.9 million people who are not alive today. 32 years of healthy life has been lost, the lifespan, and if you see just India on that map, then it is 860, that's 8.6 lakh children alive, 9 lakh lost, and we have lost 45 years of life for every child living with type 1 diabetes. In our country today, and we will talk about that, and look where we stand. Look at these countries, where the kind of lifespan, the healthy lifeline that you can see there, and look where India is, not even a low middle income group, are we somewhere? And that hurts. And why does India look like this? 1% of our patients, and if you just think of it as access of care, actually disparity is a very wide thing. But if we just think of access to care, even then just less than 1% of our people who have a lifespan of 60% or more are on devices. 54 years of life and more are people who have basal bolus, insulin and strips and education. And this is just 10% of the country and we have 28 years only of healthy life, and this is 80% of the population of India. Imagine, today we still have 80% who are still on some kind of rationed premix, occasional testing. So yes, we are looking, we are, have rockets in the space, we are a great nation, but when it comes to type one diabetes, we have a lot of disparity from the automated pumps to not even having access to insulin and strips. 8.9% of the children are never diagnosed. Yet people do not diagnose type 1 diabetes and children are dying, which means 1.4 lakh birthdays were not celebrated in India just this year. Imagine a child today with all our robust healthcare system not surviving for their first birthday, just or for the next birthday, just because somebody could not diagnose type 1 diabetes. And that is the truth. So we are going to look at these disparities. The first disparity and a very important one is of delayed diagnosis. If we, type 1 diabetes index says that if we could promptly diagnose it, then we would restore three years of life, healthy life. Why? Because today in India, yet, Maximum diagnosis happens with DK. That is how the first time they are detected. Yet early diagnosis is a dream. What did we do in Marathwara for the last 20 years? We started training the GPs and the school teachers for a very simple thing on what are the signs and symptoms. I'm very happy to share that now, in last two years, we are seeing a change. 20 years, last two years, we are seeing a change in the trend. And we no longer have people coming to us with type 1 diabetes and DK. So education, one simple poster in every clinic, one simple poster in every school, costing 10 rupees, is probably going to save these children. And that's what is going to change the lives of these children. And as I said, dying because you don't have access to insulin. So we thought we'll do something about it. When I started work, there was no surviving adult with type 1 diabetes. I said, where have they gone? And that is how Udan started. 
and today. We dream, we had a big dream. We started with regular NPH, dreamed that one day this will happen, and people just helped. You reach out and the whole world comes to you, and they start helping. Today, LFAC supports us with Glargene for more than 1,000 kids. So now we have wonderful results, hypoglycemia, and there's hardly any admissions. One test trip, even the index calculates, gives three years of healthy life. Today, in Udan, every child receives 100 strips. The purpose to share this is it can be done. Beg, borrow, steal, fight with the government, do whatever it takes. It's going to save a life if the child can monitor three to four times a day. I didn't start with anything with me. I used to beg everyone I met. My biological children were so ashamed of me. They were like, Mom, you start, wherever you go, you start talking about this. I said, OK. That's how it happened. That's how things happened. And now they are on auto mode. Every child is provided with the best of care. Imagine just a vial of insulin and one strip, and you're losing lakhs of children in the country. Can we forgive ourselves? Maybe this is something we can do. But although T1D index talks about only devices, insulin, and monitoring, but disparity in rest of the country is beyond that. There is food insecurity. The only thing you get in Russian is rice and roti and uh, game. You don't get other things. So we tied up with other NGOs who are food providers and started supplying protein, at least dals and other things, and peanuts, etc. and trained everyone for what is locally available food. So those are the reason I'm sharing is these are disparities that each one of us can change in every village where we live. Disparity in literacy. Why should literacy be a barrier? We are again tied up with other NGOs who did adult education. Numero literacy was something. And very interestingly, a phone has reached everyone. And because a phone can do so much that even the lowest literacy people are now able to do a lot of good diabetes care without being actually being able to read and write. And those are the little tools that we could create. Outcome, in the remotest of village, so we have people who, uh, what do you call them, nomads, or people who are bonded labor, they exist. Do you know that? That still exists. I have children who are children of parents who are bonded labor on sugarcane fields. And yet, they are doing amazingly well. Then we do not have access to healthcare professionals. Children can say, no one was there. Nobody knows, even if we have a problem. Now each of my child has a keto strip, but when they take it to the doctor in the village, the doctor has no clue what it is. And what are we supposed to do with it? So the entire education is the key to what we want to do. And we created something called Mighty Moms. Entire work that we are doing in the region is done by mothers of children who are living with type 1 diabetes. They're empowered. We run 24 by 7 helplines. We have not seen a hospitalization for diabetes in the last five years. So this is something doable, very basic, does not require a lot of money. If it can convert into a national program, a state program, a global program, it is absolutely can take care of disparities. Again, to access education. Diabetes education is absolute necessity. We all know that we cannot do without structured diabetes education. But why has it has to be in a classroom? Lovely, the NDP program, I also run it. It's amazing. But why should we deny that education to a person who is living on the field and cannot come because of daily wage laborers? Because we then created all kinds of things. We do street plays. We um, sing, dance, all kinds of things. But point being that even the most low literacy access or low slow learners, people who do not have the ability to learn, learn in a different way. Everyone can learn. The onus to teach is ours. Can we create a way that they can learn? Because without self-management education, all the provision of insulins and strips is going to be useless. You can't make children live in your lap for the rest of their life. They have to be independent. Mental health support. When we were able to give them, and this is a global pandemic, it is the issue. The IDF theme this year is well-being in living with type 
with diabetes because the emotional mental well-being is a huge thing. Technology came to our aid. We collaborated with WISA, which is a global mental health support system, emotional well-being. They created it as for us in Marathi. Now every villager, because phone is something people have, has a, on a counselor in their pocket. And we have seen amazing results in the adolescent and young population that needed counselors. We don't have counselors. We don't have psychiatrists. Who is going to talk to the traumas that are happening in the growing age, which happens to all of us, especially when you're living with a chronic condition? Screening for complications, I tell you that I, we beg, borrow, steal, but everyone helps. So government medical college contributes, so many pharma companies contribute. Every person gets screened for everything needed as per the SPAD guidelines. So far, an extremely low rate of complications. Technology, 35 years difference can happen. A 6.5 years of healthy life by using CGMS. And we have started using, so we are getting more and more ambitious. Now we are started using CGMS. We have Marathi insulin dosage apps, simple stuff which you don't require internet. Our children can now carb count and then they can put in their dose and take the right dose and get good results. So these are some things which if made an effort for can definitely reduce disparity. Peer group is the biggest heart of type one care. If you want to do one thing for people living with diabetes is connect them to other people living with type 1 diabetes. Nothing empowers as the power of a peer group who is living the life, walking the same shoes. That outcome, in Udhan, you will find children taking insulin on the street, in the bus, with the Pani Puri Wala. Now the Pani Puri Wala knows how to give insulin because every girl who goes to him first checks the sugar, takes the insulin shot, and then takes Pani Puri. So it's normalized to that level, and that is something we need to do. Normalization of a life with type 1 diabetes. And the last disparity is, the, and this is a global phenomena, stigma. Even in countries who are progressive, countries like US, UK, we don't have data, they have a lot of data. They have racial stigma, ethnicity stigma, rural urban stigma, gender discrimination. So we said, okay, we can't give lectures. What we did was see the facts. Now, no longer does that stigma occur because the entire ecosystem sees that there are so many people married, so many kids. I'm a grandmother to more than 200 children now. Everyone is in higher education. So many school toppers, four of them are doing MBBS. So we can't uh, do something uh, unless we have role models, we have real heroes. So please promote your heroes. That's a great way to dispel disparity. Bring out uh, these little ones, bring them on stage, highlight them, praise them, and show them to other people. So Uran's efforts were just a part, but actually it's not just me. I mean, if I'm just a very small drop in this entire ocean. India is working very hard. A big salute to everyone working in this space. RSSDI, NFAC, CDIC, ISPE has its ideal program. Uh, CHAI, the Clinton Health is working in different states. The West Bengal model that Dr. Sujoy Ghosh created is doing extremely well. There are more than 14 known organizations, but actually there may be much more. PPHF, Tie Up, Empower, Breakthrough Diabetes, Sweet Registry, and so many unsung heroes. Everyone is working together. We need you all also to join this. Every one child matters. We want you to join this caravan, make a difference with every one child. I want to now share in the next five minutes that I have, I want you to meet Mizpah. Because what I told you was theory maybe. I want you to see her. I want you to feel her. I want you to see her from racial discrimination, gender discrimination, urban rural discrimination, low literacy discrimination. See the next five minutes, meet Mizpa, feel her from that disparity and what little things which don't cost a lot can make a difference to a child's life and give her her dreams. Could you please share? Yes, please. This is Mizpa, a little girl from Uran. Five minutes. Okay. 
मेरा नाम मिसबा है मेरी उम्र बारह साल है मेरा परिवार बहुत बड़ा है अब्बू अम्मी दादा दादी चाचा चाची दो भाई और एक बहन है आप सोच रहे होंगे कि मैं ये सब क्यों बता रही हूँ नहीं बताऊंगी तो आप मुझे जानेंगे कैसे कामों में अम्मी की मदद जो करती हूँ ये मेरा इंसुलिन पॉट है जो मुझे उड़ाने दिया इसमें मेरा इंसुलिन ठंडा रहता है मेरे पास फ्रिज नहीं है ना अच्छा अब मेरे इंसुलिन लेने का टाइम हो गया है बेटा खाना खाया ना मस्त खाया ग्लूकोमीटर इंसुलिन आई कार्ड ग्लूकोज की गोलियां और टिफिन ये मेरे बेस्ट फ्रेंड्स हैं इनके बिना तो मैं स्कूल जाती ही नहीं इस बार मैं क्लास सेवेंथ में गई मेरा फेवरेट सब्जेक्ट साइंस है मुझे अपने दोस्तों के साथ खेलना बहुत अच्छा लगता है खाने को लिया ना हाँ अम्मी अच्छा ठीक है टाइम से घर आ जाना पूजा दीदी मैं मिसबा मेरा शुगर 372 आया अभी कीटोन्स भी चेक किए कीटोन्स नहीं है क्या करूं दीदी करती हूं दीदी थैंक यू अब तो उड़ान की 24 फोर बाई सेवन हेल्पलाइन है सब आसान हो गया है हॉस्पिटल जाना ही नहीं पड़ता पर आठ साल पहले जब मुझे डायबिटीज़ डिटेक्ट हुआ था तब बहुत तकलीफ़ हुई थी दो बार तो हॉस्पिटल में एडमिट होना पड़ा था अबू के पास हॉस्पिटल के पैसे नहीं थे तो मजबूरी में आधा खेत बेचकर मेरा इलाज करवाया अम्मी और अबू को दूसरों के खेतों में मजदूरी करनी पड़ी उन्हें पढ़ना लिखना नहीं आता ना
होता है खास मेरे लिए अबू ये सब्जियाँ अपने आंगन में ही उगाते हैं मुर्गियाँ भी पाली हैं ताकि मैं रोज अंडे खा सकूं। अब तो मेरे साथ साथ मेरे घर के सब लोग प्रोटीन और फाइबर खाने लगे हैं और मैं तो कार्ब काउंट करके ही खाती हूँ मेरी डॉक्टर कहती है कि मैं किसी से कम नहीं और मैं वो सब कुछ कर सकती हूँ जो मैं चाहती हूँ एक दिन दादी ने मुझे मिसबा का मतलब बताया जो घर को रोशन करे मुझे तो पूरे गांव को रोशन करना है मुझे डॉक्टर बनना है डॉक्टर मिसबा शेख So there are so many misbahs out there. They don't need to come to a city in their own village. This little misbah now is in 12th and actually preparing for NEET. And one day she will be here as Dr. Misbah. Thank you so much.